every Tuesday at 12.30 for your weekly news roundup and a discussion of current events. Feel free to comment, ask us questions in the field below. Alan, yes. obviously we need to talk about UMBC's NBC. Retrievers! Retrievers Woo! rule. They rule. Incredible. We love them. Yeah. Been an incredible time. Amazing story. Mm-hmm. Amazing, amazing story. Cinderella story. And right here <laughs> in this little studio, we have a room full of retrievers. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Well, the UMBC men's basketball team's history making season came to an end on March 18th as the 16th seeded retrievers fell 50 to 43 to ninth seeded Kansas State in the second round of the NCAA tournament, as reported by Press Box mm-hmm. and every other media organization and everyone in the else world. In the whole entire universe. Coming off its record breaking takedown of number one seed Virginia on March 16th, UMBC was unable to contain the Wildcats. That's all right. UMBC's second round appearance marks the furthest, furthest that the retrievers have advanced in the tournament. UMBC's only other tournament appearance came during the 2007-2018 season. UMBC is 46 to, 20, 46 to 24 under head coach Ryan Odom. Odom? Odom. 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 Sorry. Tried to make during, it all fancy. Yeah, Odom. During the, the past two years, after going 7-25 and 25 the year before he took over the program. So he Sports deserves that raise. Year. Yeah, he does. They should keep him around. Right. But anybody who went to UMBC is really proud of this. And uh, UMBC is everywhere now. I mean, it, it's uh, cool. It's CNN's cool. website and everywhere. I know. And Zach Seidel, I mean, you know, they're... Um, there's director social, of communications yeah. and everything. Just, it's been an amazing time to be a graduate. It is be because a forever, you know, I graduated a while back, right. as did you, sorry to say. <laughs> but we graduated a while back right. and forever we've said, oh, yeah, we graduated from UMBC. And you sort of get a blank look sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes people are like, oh, Maryland. And you're like, mm, not <laughs> quite. Sort of. Sort of, but better. Better than that. Better than so that. anyway, it's the best underdog now. to wonder dog story ever. Yeah. And you can read Michael Lesker's thoughts on UMBC's greatness because because it doesn't just include grit and greatness. Remember that grit, grit and greatness. That's your campaign, and it's right, Doctor Rabowski, right, the man who invented grit and greatness, who I love, who we Everyone all love, him. and yeah. So, um, and you can also read Jeff Seidel's story about his son, the director of multimedia communications for UMBC athletics, at jmoreliving.com. Additionally, our own producer here, Glenn Clark, wrote an incredible personal account of the amazing win for, from the perspective of a former UMBC student, and you can read that at pressboxonline.com. And actually, Glenn, what I really liked about your story was you, when you talked about Dr. Rabowski and how he, you always knew him to walk around campus and say hi to everyone. He did that forever. I was there. He for, still does that. He still does that. I was there for his first year. And he was doing. He knew. He knew everyone on a first name basis. Like, how does the man do that? Special. He he is very yeah. special. It also helps that he's brilliant. <laughs> you know, he's brilliant. And has a, and a he's memory like and charismatic, yeah. like nothing you've ever seen before. If you, none of you is familiar with Dr. Rabowski, you need to get familiar. He can he, he can play classical piano. <laughs> he's a math genius. He's uh, he, he's it, a Renaissance it, man, I and think, he was a civil yeah. rights uh, yes, child he, activist. He, yeah, he got arrested, right. like, as a young 12 person. 12 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's an incredible guy. He is. All right, so now we need to talk about the weather. Okay. But it's not yes. what you would think, Alan. So did you know that the Jews, and specifically the Rothschilds, mm-hmm. can tr- control the weather? Yeah, I knew that. You, you knew that? Because sure. I never heard this before. I did sure. not know that we do that. Well, a councilman in Washington, D.C. has suggested on Facebook that rich Jews who control the, uh, who control the weather cause an unexpected snowstorm. Mm-hmm. Trayon White Sr., a Democrat representing the district's 8th Ward, posted a video on March 16th in which he accused, quote, the Rothschilds. I don't even know how he knows the Rothschilds. I, yeah. He's a young guy. I haven't really had, had any fight, like, interaction with the Rothschilds right. in a long time. But he <laughs> accused them of controlling the climate to make money, an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. I don't really know how that works he later removed the video by the way okay um the rothschilds of course uh, are are were a, a well-known wealthy european jewish dynasty descended from a jewish banker originally from germany mm-hmm. and there have been anti-semitic conspiracy theories over many decades that have charged the rothschild family and other wealthy jews for interceding in world events for their own financial gain okay so in the video white said Man, it was just it just started snowing out of nowhere this morning, man. Y'all better pay attention to this climate control, this climate manipulation. And DC keep talking about we're we're a resi- resilient city. And that 
a model based off the Rothschilds controlling the climate to create natural disasters they can pay for to own their own cities, man. Be careful. I, don't, I still don't understand. Like, I'm yeah. really confused. I don't think he so, understands even. So we make it snow so that, what, the city is less desirable and then the price goes down and we can just purchase it because mm-hmm. we want to purchase all the American cities? I Okay. Well, internet conspiracy <laughs> theorists have stated this belief that the Rockefeller Foundation's Resilient Cities Initiative, which provides grants to cities, including Washington, to address environmental and economic problems, is part of a plot to control and reduce the population of North America. And some conspiracy theorists also contend that the Rothschilds, working together with the Rockefellers, have technology to control the weather. Amazing. So in other words, there's just a lot of stupid people on the planet, okay? Yeah, this guy is a total moron. Yeah. Sorry, Councilman White, <laughs> but you're an idiot. Yeah. And also, by the way, <laughs> if we were controlling the weather, why would we stick around? Well, actually, no. We can, We leave. We go to – we snowbird Florida. it to Florida <laughs> every – Well, uh, some, some people do. <laughs> but that's not controlling the weather. No. We would st- we would stay where we well, were. We would stay where we are, right? And Correct. also, like <laughs> this weather does not help our hair. So, like curly people, they would make they would make no humidity. They would make no <laughs> snow. Anyway. So. <laughs> Meanwhile, White told the Washington Post that the video says what it says and expressed surprise that his remarks were considered in any way anti-Semitic. He's surprised. After all, he didn't say Jews. He said the Rothschilds. He's, yeah, he just doesn't like them. Which is a like nice uh, euphemism for right. rich Jews. He sent an apology to the newspaper via text message, and I read that he's <laughs> working with either the ADL or okay. some Jewish organization to uh, kind of enhance his sensitivities toward the Jewish this community. This guy's a Democrat, and he's a minority. Mm-hmm. Do you know how scary that is? Like that, that just shows you like how far gone all of this is. Well, all right. There's a lot of uh, misguided <laughs> thinking out there. What can I tell you? So some more misguided thinking. Yeah, the more more bad news for the uh, Weinstein Company. The, <laughs> the Weinstein <laughs> Company Holdings LLC announced that it has filed for voluntary bi- bankruptcy and entered in a, into an agreement to sell its assets to a Dallas-based equity firm, according to NPR. Mm-hmm. It also announced that it is ending all non-disclosure agreements that prevented victims of the alleged sexual misconduct at the hands of disgraced Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein from talking about their experiences. The, the announcement comes after a group investor, of investors led by former Obama administration official Maria Contreras-Sweet tried and failed to purchase the assets of the Weinstein Company earlier this month. That deal, which would have reinvented the firm as a female-run company, collapsed upon the discovery of debt previously unknown by the investors, which is a shame. Yeah. All right. So if you're just joining us, this is Jay Moore's Need to Know on Facebook Live. Share, like, and follow at hashtag Jay Moore Need to Know. So on to some happier news, maybe? Well, Senator Bernie Sanders has helped launch what he purports what, – what is purported to be a global peace initiative on the anniversary of the Iraq War, mm-hmm. the second Iraq War, that is. Right. Organizers of the Global Call for Peace said 11,000 callers from around the world, including from Israel, participated in the March 18th launch. Mm-hmm. The emphasis of the call, which was initiated by MoveOn.org, a U.S. left-wing activist group, was on the, atten- on the tensions of, between the Koreas. But speakers also noted that it was the 15th anniversary of the Iraq wow. War. Wow. Time flies. 15. Yep. And we're still in it. Still haven't we're, found it's not these done. WMDs. But it's also not done. We're still there. No, we're still there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sanders made what he said were what, uh, made what he said were the failures of that war the centerpiece of his appeal to join the movement. The war in Iraq was a foreign policy blunder of enormous magnitude. He you said. Think? <laughs> Had it not been for the Iraq War, ISIS would almost certainly not exist. It undermined American diplomatic efforts to resolve the Palestinian-Israeli it, it conflict. So funny story so. about the Gulf War. Mm-hmm. I think that's what we called it back then, yep. the first one. Um, my prom date was in basic training at the oh. time and uh, got shipped out. And I didn't have a prom date, and I was really pissed. <laughs> I was more angry <laughs> that I did not have a prom date than I was that he was leaving to go fight the Gulf War. Yeah. That I didn't want anyone fighting. But uh, well, You were so. serving your country as well, right? <laughs> I, I made a sacrifice, man. I made a big sacrifice. They also serve who sta- sta- go stag to the prom. <laughs> no. So he sent a list of his um, acceptable stand-ins. And they, ah, yeah, and they wow. were, <laughs> no, it was not okay because they were all friends of his and I didn't want to spend prom night with any of them. So I said, no, that's not happening. I, I overruled him and I took, 
my good buddy Tony Andreoni, and we had an awesome good old time. Tony. Tony, Tony's the best. So anyway, so that's my funny. You put Glenn uh, to sleep here. Go floor way. story. He's like, please stop talking. All right. So anyway, I found it entertaining, but Thank I don't you. think Glenn did. Thank you. I, I mean, I'm just here to entertain you. Okay, Alan, really, that's, that's, that's like all, all I'm here for. Right. Okay. <laughs> And our so, one reviewer. Okay. Speaking of entertainment. <laughs> okay. So, of course, we have the March for, for Our Lives coming up this weekend in Washington. We do. And two of Broadway's most popular voices have joined forces for a song to benefit the march, according to CNN. Lynn Manuel Miranda and Ben Platt are featured on the new song, Found Tonight. The mashup combines messages in the songs, uh, the story of tonight from Hamilton, and you will be found from Dear Evan Hansen. A portion of proceeds made from the sale of the song will go toward March for Our Lives, a demonstration in support of common sense gun control. Mm-hmm. Oprah, oh, we don't even you can say, say her that. You can say it though. You we can be formal. Have to say it because you guys are Oprah. so tight. Yeah. Clooney, George Clooney, <laughs> <laughs> and Spielberg. Steven Spielberg have donated money. Donated money for the march, which is this Saturday. Yes, it is. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. Wish I could be there. Justin Timberlake shared a video with the Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser on March 19th to encourage his social media followers to join the march. Join it. I think they're expecting like 500,000 people or more. That would be great. Jennifer Hudson, Ariana Grande, Demi Lovato, and Common are set to perform. So, so it's going to be one heck of a day. And we should add that, of course, we heard this morning about a shooting at Great Mills High School yep. in St. Mary's, Mary's County. County. So it's still happening. Another the, shooting, uh, shooter another was day. Killed. Right. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the shooter was killed, and uh, there's two kids that are um, in the house seriously uh, wounded. So, uh, so it, it never ends. So, yeah. any students attending the March of Our Lives on March 24th interested in contributing to our coverage that day can email me at amanda k at jmoreliving.com. And anyone who wants to get updates all day can check that at jmoreliving.com on March 24th, and we'll be updating live all day long, unless, of course, the phones stop working, in which case we'll have some problems. Um, that could happen. It could happen because it happened in the Women's March, and right. it sounds like they're expecting a big, big bunch of people. Uh, but, yes, definitely check um, jmoreliving.com all day on March 24th. All right, Alan, let's do a J word of the day and get out of here. Okay. The J word of the day is shadal. Shadal. Shadal is a Yiddish word, and it means a wig. Usage of it would be Mrs. M- <laughs> Mrs. Nussbaum <laughs> thinks that we don't know that that's a shadal, please. I think the president needs to get himself a better shadal. <laughs> uh, I wish this was a shadal because the weather I'm controlling isn't doing me any favors it's right like now. Pelting. It, was, like, it hurts. To go it's, out hurty. This morning. it's hurty out there. Uh, so, the hail. Oh I didn't do that. Like, if I had designed the weather, <laughs> the that's not what I would have selected. You didn't do it. The Rothschilds did it. <laughs> Those Rothschilds, they're so, they're so silly. Uh, remember to join us here Tuesdays at 12.30 for your Need to Know News Roundup. And very exciting news. You can join us this Friday at 12.30 on the Weekend yeah. Agenda for transgender activist Abby Stein, who will be Celebrity. stopping by. It's going to be model, really too. cool. She had, there's a Vogue spread. She did an yeah. interview in In Style. She's, she's like she's, getting she's be tons of press. Too, soon, Thursday right? night. Thursday, Thursday night, right? night. And then very she's coming exciting. in after. And then she's going to the march, I believe. I would assume that the Soul Center is going to be absolutely packed. Right. I don't know how the turnout was for the last appearance. She was at Goucher, Goucher like a right. few weeks Month ago. ago. Yeah. All right. Tune in to Facebook Live to join the conversation. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and follow at hashtag JMoreNeedToKnow. And go to jmoreliving.com for more news updates. Happy, Happy spring! spring.